So I'm here with Jeff Savage at the Fond du Lac Cultural Center and Museum. And the reason we're doing this is because if you're going to reimagine a place, it's great to really know it. And we think of creative placemaking actually as creative place knowing. And so we're here to learn from Jeff about the Anishinaabe people and other indigenous people, even before the Anishinaabe people, who were here and making a living and a life in this area before there were other uh, Europeans here at all. So, Jeff, thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview with us. And I know that you've lived here a long time and uh, you um, had everything to do with getting this museum started and recording the history of the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. So we would like you to tell us about the beginnings. Well, okay, well, give, give a little bit of history of the area and we're talking about the uh, west end of Cloquet and, and kind of the area of the river at that spot and point is uh, the old migration trail from the Mississippi watershed over to the Lake Superior watershed or the other way for millennia went right through that area. It came down, they went like, from Sandy Lake, there was a portage over to where Floodwood is today and then from there down to uh, the uh, to that curve in the river, and uh, so it was used quite a bit. It was a well-known trail, and there's been lots of Native people who've lived in this area for for millennia. In fact, even up on I think it's Boulder Lake, the University of Minnesota has an archaeological site that's over seven thousand years old. So there is a lot of uh, artifact history in the area of lots of different tribes that lived here. Right now, you, you're, we're kind of known as the Anishinaabe or the Ojibwe who are living in this area right at this moment. But before us, there were many other tribes that came through this area and actually have origin stories of this area and Lake Superior in, in their oral histories. Um, over 4,000 years ago, this area had to have been traveled over by the Hopewell and the other copper uh, hunting indigenous folks, paleo indigenous at the time. They knew about uh, copper mines on Isle Royal in northern Michigan. In fact, there are even a couple ancient copper mines over in Wisconsin and Douglas County, not too far from Cloquet, Duluth, Superior area. So there's a big copper mining history millennia ago. And there's uh, regions stories of this area from uh, the Assiniboines, the Northern Cheyenne, the uh, Mandans, and uh, the Lakota were living here also. So there's been quite a few footsteps through this area before the settlers boots uh, walked through West Cloquet also. About the area where the hospital is right now, used to be a village, an, an Indian village there, at one of the main nodes of the, uh, the portage. In fact, that's how Cloquet got its name. It came from Portage Top. Back in the day, whenever there was a rest stop, or an area, uh, they would call that a node. A node is, the definition of node is where there's an intersection or a, a, where trails would cross or a stopping place. And so when you start talking in portage talk, and let's say you're leaving Lake Superior your first major stop, your major node on what's portage is 
is where Cloquet is today. And then they would cross, go up uh, St. Louis River and where there's another portage on all the way up. Then they would travel till they got to where the Savannah River crosses and enters Lake Superior. I mean, uh, St. Louis River. And uh, that would be another node. So your first, on the, so the main stop on your, the first leg of your journey would have been Cloquet or the last stop, main stop or node on the last leg of your journey coming from the Mississippi would have been right there by West Cloquet. And so that's kind of how Cloquet got its name because the main node in your leg is also called the node of Cloquet, the lymph node of Cloquet. So that kind of fits in with that portage talk on the first leg of your journey, stopping at your main node. Someone, uh, I'm sure with some kind of medical background, traveling the portage, noted, noted that the node, this was a main node, and they said, well, that's, a, that's a, the main node is known as Cloquet, the node of Cloquet, which is named after the doctor who discovered that main node in your leg, that lymph node in your leg. So Cloquet is named after lymph node, <laughs> which is really portage talk that uh, it seems like... Uh, a lot of citizens in this country have a very short memory when it comes to history. And the reason for the name of Cloquet was forgotten very fast. It wasn't named after no priest. There was no priest, Father Cloquet. It was named after a physical feature that was very familiar to people back in those days because they had to butcher their own meat and things, so they knew the anatomy of animals and things a lot better than uh, people today. Most people uh, have never seen a whole chicken with his feathers on. <laughs> they only see it wrapped in plastic at the grocery store. So a lot of that former speech and definitions of words has changed over time. What you made me think of is that the West End is a node, it's an intersection, it's a crossroads, it's a gathering place. And those are, are ideas that our creatives can use as they try to help reimagine um, a, a flourishing area there. Yeah, see a lot of people have to understand them. The island had to have been used a lot. You know, it was a nice island, it was, uh, a spot on the uh, right on the river for stopping your canoes and that so it had to be a, a good gathering spot before even um, the European settlers came here we have a history in this area of burial mounds there were some up here on top of the river and if you literally leave West Cloquet to come up here you'd be walking pretty much where uh, the streets are right now to come up to this area where we have these three small lakes which was uh, ha which had a burial mound on it so it was well known and and well used long before uh, the uh, Europeans came to this area so a lot of it was well known and well used and uh, so we are so fortunate to have our own cultural center and museum and a culture bearer in you here. Uh, and how long has the museum been here? Well, the museum was, the building was donated by a foundation and a, a group of foundations that donated these log cabin kits to reservations that had tribal colleges. 
so they could create a museum and a building for uh, repatriating artifacts and things back to different tribes. And so Fond du Lac decided to put theirs up here at, on this spot next to our tribal government building. And the museum, this building was put up in the year 2000. And I know you are just finishing another cultural language center. How is that coming? Okay, we, we, last year we had built another new cultural and language and community health building. It's known as the Anishinaabe Wigame. And uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, the grand opening and the op opening of our new cultural center and language center has kind of been postponed. We still do a little bit of work out of there trying to help community members reconnect with different seasonal and cultural activities and preserve our, our dying uh, Anishinaabe language. So we're working steadily on that. Um, hopefully later this summer, uh, things will open up a little more. Everybody go get vaccinated so that uh, we can get over this p pandemic and get on with uh, life and live in the four seasons. I want to thank you, Jeff, for sharing your immense knowledge and uh, the depth that you bring as a uh, person who's lived here and, and cared about this region such a long time. Thank you very much. Okay, well, lots of luck with your endeavors.